Yo, what's going on everyone? It's MJO23Dan, back with another video. Today's video is the Air Jordan 30, uh, releasing on February 12th. I actually got my pair from an early access from Nike.com. And basically, I uh, got it a day early. Nike actually emailed Nike Plus accounts uh, for early access if you wanted the shoes or not. Uh, I believe some pulled the trigger, some didn't, some wanted to try on the shoes. I knew I was getting the Jordan 30s, so I didn't hesitate, and here it is today. So when you pick up the shoe, it's very light. It kind of does feel and look like the Air Jordan 29. So what you want to call it, the Jordan 29.5 the Jordan 29 SE, whatever you want to call it. As you can see with the toe here, they got that iridescent jewel-like look at the toe. But um, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of different. Um, I was worried about this toe piece right here, like peeling back from pictures that I've seen like early on, but uh, we'll see if that eventually happens. And you know what, it, it does really remind me of like uh, Michael Jackson's glove. I don't know if he was, if, if they paid homage to that, but uh, that jewel bead effect that looks really really crazy so uh, on the midsole all throughout and on the outsole you do have uh, an inscription excellence is never second place so you'll see that all throughout the midsole and the outsole of the shoe at the bottom you have the Jordan 30 XXX you still have that tendril as you see with the Jordan 29 it's a flight speed what they're calling now flight speed plate instead of the flight plate you still have that divot that's here at the heel. So uh, let's see over on the on the left shoe here, which I thought was pretty different. So whenever you look at a world map, you kind of see that you know the North Americas are on the left side, going on to Africa, which is on the right side. So uh, they pretty much flipped it. But if you look at it this way, I mean it's it's kind of correct. Just flipped upside down so anyways you have Africa on the right of the tongue and you have the Americas on the left on the Americas you do see that there is a blue UNC pin right there at North Carolina which of course is the beginnings of MJ it's got this textured look at the top of it it kind of reminds me of the Air Jordan 13 hologram and that way where it's inside the shoe and then you have the performance woven all the way around. So uh, with a 30 here, they kind of worked it into the performance woven, but it's kind of like an embossed look. But uh, it's, it's like nicely integrated into the upper, so that's pretty nice. The collar up here kind of just reminds me of corduroy. And uh, it's got a pretty decent amount of padding here. And they did you know it it does seem like there's a lower cut on it than on the 29 so if I bust out the 29 you do see you know the similarities of course with the tooling it is the same I believe the bags are also uh, same millimeter but I'll leave that to the uh, experts over at weartesters.com to do that full performance review for you guys so what happened here with the outsole of the 29 so there are actually two pieces dividing this so in the 29 you have the division right here at the tendril heel forefoot whereas on the 30 you don't have that line here it's just a continuous one piece uh, they did continue on with the back here with the midsole wrapping around uh, whereas they stopped here at the midsole of the 29 so, and then you see that the height's uh, a little bit different. On the 30, they went a little bit lower back there at the Achilles. On the 29, you know, they uh, wrapped it up. And then you see something similar to what I noticed here. Um, going back to the Air Jordan 2010, where you have like a asymmetrical collar here, whereas on the 29, it's uh you know parallel to each other which is pretty much the same all right guys so upon initial wear the shoes felt very snug it's a lot more narrow than i expected here at the toe uh, in comparison to the air jordan 29 uh the jordan 29 uh 
it, it still fits snug as well if you went true to size. Like for example, I'm a size 10, uh, true to size. But uh, I did go size 10 and a half with the 29. And that's something I should have done with the Jordan 30. But, uh, you know, upon uh, initial wear, the shoes were very snug. I unlaced it, relaced it, felt a little bit better. But uh, if you're definitely a wide footer, you definitely want to go half size up. Uh, I think if you went a full size up, it'd be uh, definitely a little bit more longer uh, with the shoe as compared to maybe wide. So uh, just keep that noted whenever you're in uh, the market for the Air Jordan 30. If you're a wide footer, go half size up. But uh, overall, I, I think it really looks like a, a neat looking shoe. Uh, I did want to get the launch colorway. And I typically always get the launch colorway. Uh, I love that Cosmos look right there. And uh, what Tinker had pulled out at the uh, initial unveiling uh, back last month in January. But that whole Cosmos look of the upper just really looked really nice. I wouldn't be surprised, and I'm probably going to say this here first, that I wouldn't be surprised that if someone took this shoe, gave it to, say, Mosh Customs or some somebody else, and uh, asked to do like a Cosmos custom for the Air Jordan 30. Uh, you heard it here first, I'm, I'm going to say that right now. So yeah, I guess if anyone attempts to try and replicate that Cosmos colorway that Tinker pulled out, it definitely, you know, Mosh would probably definitely be the man for that for that job. But anyways, that's your, uh, that's your look at the Air Jordan 30. I'll have a special coming out on MJ's birthday, so be sure to subscribe and it'll be available on February 17, 2016. Uh, again, it's MJO23Dan. I'll talk to you guys later. Take care.